Hello, it's Jeff Harrison here, and I want to discuss a way to recreate a shape such as this. I've made it transparent and get locked it so it doesn't move on me. I'm going to make two different versions, one where it has the white lines uh, as a separate shape, and another version where it would be transparent so you could see through it against, let's say, a vehicle's paint color or something like that. Okay, so what we want to do is a left click on the rectangle tool, and I'm going to draw out a rectangle pressing control to constrain it to a perfect rectangle. So zoom in using the F4 key. Now you can round corners in a couple of different ways. You could use this there if you wanted. Um, that seems to work, but usually I'll, I'll actually, I've set node tracking to be on in my in my workspace and that's something you can enable in the options. And what that allows is you to interactively adjust uh, the radius of corners, such as that. Alright, so the next thing we need to do is draw some simple lines. I'm using the freehand tool, pressing control to keep it nice and straight. I'm going to select, shift select the rectangle we just drew. So we have the line and the rectangle. I'm going to press C and E to align them. And I'm just going to make this a little bit longer and hold down my control key and I'm moving to the right and then I'm going to press my right mouse button. You see the little plus sign by my cursor and that will duplicate it at that rotation. I'm going to press Control R and Control R again. Now I'm going to hit Control A, shift select the rectangle and I'm going to weld or you could also combine those all those lines into one shape. Uh, if we go to my weld icon you can see I've assigned the letter W to weld things so that I don't have to always go up to the icon there. So I'm just going to press W and now you can make the outline thicker. I'm just going to try two points, that's not right. Maybe you know, six points just to get a certain kind of thickness. Uh, by the way, I have macros at macromonster.com that allow things like that. So you can interactively see how thick a line is. So let's say I'm happy with that. All right, so now we need to um, uh, simply grab our circle tool. I'm just going to make a quick circle. Press P to center to the page. And uh, I'm actually going to align that to the uh, the other lines I draw by pressing C and E just to make sure it's centered to each other there. Just going to zoom in on that, make sure it's about the same outline width. I'm going to scale inwards, holding shift, to get a circle the size of that little inner one. Size it up a little bit. And uh, I'm going to cut that to the clipboard by pressing Control X. Now when I paste it back in place, unlike a lot of other programs, um, like I said, it'll, it'll paste. If I press Control V, it'll go right back into that position. So I'm just kind of getting it out of the way for the moment. Um, now something very important we need to do to these lines still is convert them to an object. And you can go to the Arrange uh, menu and go down to Convert out Line to Object. But it's very handy to learn Control Shift Q because that's the shortcut key and has been for a long time for CorelDRAW to convert an outline to an object. So Control Shift Q. It takes care of that. Now I'm going to uh, weld this inner circle to those lines by pressing the W key or you could press the icon either way and that leaves that result. Alright, so the next thing we can do is either trim into that out, outer rectangle using this new black you know, piece because it is one single curve now or we can intersect with that rectangle using that piece. And So what I'm going to do is simply duplicate uh, this shape here like this, just moving down a copy. And um, so let's go both ways. I'm going to trim into that, and that's the second icon in. You can see I've assigned my number three to that. And once that's trimmed into there, we can just simply delete that tool. And remember that we had pasted, or we can paste that circle that we uh, put on the clipboard a moment ago. I'm going to paste it in again and align it with the center of this one. Let's see, just going to give a little bit of color for the moment. And on this example, uh, I'm going to intersect instead. So I'm selecting the black piece, shift selecting the rectangle, and then I'm going to press the third icon over, which is intersect. And what that does is if, if I was to delete this piece, it actually leaves a, a piece in there that I can fill with a color. Whereas the differences with the top one, it's actually transparent there. There's there's nothing in there. It's, it's hollow. So now that we have all of our pieces in place, I'm going to unlock my original object behind the scenes there and get rid of the transparency that I had. 
And then I'm going to go down to, let's see if I'm able to get my, it was hidden out of view there for a moment from uh, the screen video, but not a big deal. Just going to color some of my pieces here. So we're done with this now. I'm going to put that back into position. Um, and now we need to simply, I'm just going to get rid of any outlines that I have by pressing Control A to select all, right clicking on the, the no color swatch. And we just, you know, the final thing that we need to do here, I'm just going to move this up so it's a little bit closer, is assign white to this piece there. So the difference is, if I was to just simply create a rectangle and put it behind everything, I'm just going to pick some color here, shift page down to send it to the back, is that you can see the example on the left has a transparent area, area there where we had our original lines, and the one on the right has a white area. So those are a couple different ways to rebuild something like that with perfect accuracy and to give you two different results. Hope you enjoyed the tutorial and come check out macromonster.com. We've got tons of macros for CorelDRAW and some for PhotoPaint as well and hope you have a great day.